Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with FlashCam University, FlashCamU.com. This is part two of the catching game tutorial. In part one, we created this code here that if you run it, it will drop objects between one and two seconds, and there'll be uh, red and blue circles and squares. Um, you can review part one and part two here. We're going to actually have the uh, part where you have something that catches the objects. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and create another in, a, um, another object on the screen. Uh, this one we already have in here, and it's a catcher, and it's of class catcher. We just named it the same thing. We're going to go ahead and create that catcher. Uh, we're going to uh, set it up here in the uh, the class as catcher, and we're going to create it here. I'm copying and pasting to save some time. Uh, so catcher's new catcher. We're going to set it to be along the bottom of the screen and we're going to go ahead and add it to the screen there. So now we'll appear at the bottom. Uh, we should be able to run it and see it. There it is, the bottom. It doesn't do anything, doesn't move. What we're going to do is add some uh, ability for it to move. We already have um, move objects moving every frame so we're going to use that and move the catcher as well. And all we need to do that is add a simple catcher x equals mouse x. So I would do one line, and now the catcher is moving along the bottom of the screen. There you go. Now we want it to have a actually catch objects. So we're going to use a simple hit test for that. Um, here is uh, what we could do. We could do this. Uh, so as we're looping through these objects here, I actually put this up one level into the loop through of all the objects. So if uh, hit test between that object in the loop and the catcher is true, then we can do something with it. Uh, one of the things we can do is simply um, uh, remove it from the screen. And at the same time, we probably also want to get rid of it, um, splice it. So the same thing as if it hits the bottom. If it's 400, we're going to remove it from the screen, remove it from the array at the same time. So we run now, and now objects, of course, will see this one will disappear as soon as it touches the catcher, like that. There you go. Um, we probably want to go a little further than that here. We want to determine whether we've caught good objects or bad objects. You remember, in the first part, we set a dynamic variable, um, dynamic property of each of the objects of type str equals good or type str equals bad. So we can use that here. We'll go ahead and we'll say we're going to keep score. Um, before we remove the object here, we're going to go and check it, and if type str is good, we'll add 5 to the score, else we'll remove 1 from the score, so you get a penalty for catching a bad item. Uh, we're going to go up and, of course, uh, create these, this uh, score variable. Let's head to 0. Uh, so now we've got that. So this is how we've determined whether or not it's a good object or bad object, by looking at type str and type str was set when we created each of the objects to be good or bad. So now go ahead and run and we will see the same thing visually except we know that we're actually getting subtracted points for that and getting added points for catching the circles being the good objects. So we can go ahead and add something that shows the score. Uh, for simplicity's sake I'll just go ahead and add a text field here to display and I'm going to make that a dynamic text. I'm going to call it a score display. Um, in order to, for it to get recognized, I have to add it right here. And then I'll set it up every time we change the score. Um, Hopefully that should work. Now we've got an error. Um, score display. I spelled it wrong. Now there's zero at the bottom. Uh, let's see, it should change to five. There, score five. Up, oh, four, three. We'll let that one drop. We'll go to eight. So there you go. Now you can go further with this. Uh, you can have, don't have to just have good and bad objects. You can have objects of varying point values. Matter of fact, you can change this type str from good and bad to actually, you know, five, four, 
negative 10, whatever, to assign uh, values to each of the objects, um, you can go ahead and then uh, have that all calculated here. You can also probably add something to make sure that uh, you know if uh, score is less than 0, then score equals 0. That way you can't go into a negative score. Um, and uh, see that here when we try to catch this object. There we go. It stays at 0, even though it should have been negative 1. Um, and then you can go ahead and, of course, also check at this point to see whether or not a certain score has been reached. You can also check the number of objects by adding basically a counter, you know, num objects dropped or something. And every time an object is generated uh, right here in new object, you can go ahead and only set next object if, say, it's less than 50. So uh, as soon as you hit the 50th object, set next object is not called anymore and no new objects are generated. And then you can check when you remove objects here from hitting the bottom of the screen or hitting uh, the catcher um, if the number of objects is greater than 50 or equal to 50, then you can go to a new frame. The game is over. So that's basically how to finish it off. Uh, I'll make, of course, this code available at flashgameu.com uh, on the entry for this video. Uh, so look for it there. And also, you'll see the high resolution video of both of these tutorials uh, at flashgameu.com in case you're viewing this on another site where it's lower resolution. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with flashgameu.com.